get on the train and you see someone walking down the aisle and you just know that they're about to ask you for money, but you also know that you're not about to share. We all know what to do. Look down, pretend to be on our phones, even though the train has no service. Or close your eyes and pretend you are sleeping. Not me. Instead of trying to avoid the issue, I prefer to head on and just tell them the truth. I'm broke, bro. <laughs> but why is this so hard? us to do. The truth is, we had a tendency to avoid things and people who make us feel uncomfortable. Despite our efforts of becoming not accepting and inclusive, we often leave one big issue out the conversation. Ableism. In fact, most people don't even know what ableism is. According to author and disability advocate, Marjorie Sakura explained in January 2017, ableism is when a person is discounted, discriminated against, or even physically abused just for having a disability. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 57 million Americans had a disability, making up the largest minority group. And yet, Disability and ableism are almost never a part of our cultural and political conversation. So, let's start the conversation. First, we'll discuss how little representation disability has. Next, we'll explore ableism's dangerous and destructive implications. Before finally, exploring how we can stop avoiding and start advocating. Stand clear the closing doors, please. Get ready to be uncomfortable. So let's start off hating on the movie one day. Wonderful is a boy named Augie Pullman who has treated Carmen syndrome, a condition that affects children born in underdeveloped facial bones and tissues. Critics call this movie uplifting and heartwarming and so inspiring. I call it a fraud. You see, the actor who plays Augie Pony has no facial disfigurement. Instead, the director puts up static on a normal child to represent a common disorder. According to the U.S. National Cranial Facial Association, one in every 650 babies are born with a cranial facial condition. So tell me why, when the director says cut, Augie takes off his prosthetic. That's not how disability works. You just can't take it off and put it back on whenever you want to. Movies need to stop casting able-bodied actors to play disabled roles. It's annoying, it's offensive, and it is misleading. And to this day, the disabled community has little to no representation. And as a result, Disabled children are lacking role models who look like them, especially in these professional fields. Now, let's take a look at the history as to where ableism all began. Back in ancient Greece and Rome, the term for disability was monstrum, meaning monstrous. Disability studies quality points out that Plato recommended that default asking the Pillowians are mysterious and not racist, but they are not to be considered human. Even, but even though Pluto is old as dirt, our modern world still follows his sorry recommendation. I call this the Pluto effect. The continuation of the dehumanization of people with disabilities. And if we continue to dehumanize those with disabilities, we are encouraging them to fall deeper into depression, which will eventually lead to suicide. One day I came across a story of a seven-year-old boy by the name of Jackson Lazar. 
Jackson, who had treated Carlin to the contemplative suicide as the company being called derogatory terms like a freak and a monster, he told his father, everybody hates me. That even though suicide is such a big issue within the disabled community, I cannot get these statistics of how many disabled people actually kill themselves. Because there is none. The truth is, suicide within the disabled community is ignored because it is accepted. I mean, you hear it all the time. I would kill myself than be disabled. And to further prove my point, Utah State University and Mississippi State University conducted a study to find that most people actually believe it is not acceptable for a person with a disability to commit suicide than without. Are you uncomfortable yet? Now, as a black woman with dystonic cerebral palsy, I make a lot of people uncomfortable, and I enjoy it. <laughs> if it's not my blackness, then it's no disability. And if it's neither, it's probably not healthy. <laughs> Throughout 17 years of my life, I've seen countless such a disgust with the words, what is wrong with her? Trickle out from your lips. And the thing is, I'll be chilling. My personal favorite is when people come up to me and ask, are you a tardy? I just get in the dumbest look because you know you have to be a tardy to ask someone if they're a tardy. But this is the type of ableism that caused me to feel alienated for most of my life. So much that I begin to internalize that my life is a threat than an able-bodied person. And for years, I dealt with the fear of walking outside of my house, fearing that I would be pointed out. I tried my best to hide my disability. I felt crucified in society for not being born the right way. I felt suffocated because no one understood me. But most of all, I felt broken. But I am beginning to realize that their brokenness does not lie within their disability. It lies within society. And we do a poor job of validating the experiences of people with disabilities. We are told way too often that the experiences that we go through are not that serious or there's nothing we can do about it. That they're wrong. I want to end this speech by acknowledging that speech in the day has a tendency to exclude various groups of people with disabilities. For, for example, the NSDA's competitor guideline refers to delivery as standing it up. This excludes people in wheelchairs before they can even begin. And knowing this, I don't just want to talk about solutions, I want to implement them. Before I came to, to this tournament, I made sure I printed out copies of my speech to allow people who may be deaf or hard of hearing feel included in this message. And I encourage every competitor in my round to print out copies of their speech to take part in the change. Changes in accessibility need to be made to make sure that anyone with a physical or cognitive disability feels welcome in the state. And lastly, a message to the disabled community. It is time. It is time that we start letting oppression settle our tongues into silence. It is time for our voices to be heard. And for the ones who cannot fight for themselves, it is time for the ones who can to fight for them. It is time to make them uncomfortable. So let's step up here to train of ignorance. The next step is acceptance and inclusion. With that being said, if you're ever on the train again and you see that person begging for money, don't ignore them. Communicate with them. Who knows? Maybe y'all can become a broke peer, friends.